Hey folks, and welcome to Drinking Alone with Friends, a podcast where three friends drink alone together. My name's Chris. What up? It's Todd. And I'm Obert. And folks, the 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 big the big game is set. We know who's gonna be in the Super Bowl. Yeah, so uh after today we uh we found out the two teams who will be representing both the AFC and the NFC, and that would be the Colts the, and the Colts. Yes. Yeah, somehow <laughs> they, they they came back from the dead. One team Andrew, enters, one team wins. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Luck decided to unretire miraculously, came back and changed all the past, and now the Colts are facing the Colts somehow. Yep. It's, it's a time paradox, be a great folks. Super Bowl. <laughs> one, one offense led by Andrew Luck, one offense led by Jacoby Brissett. Oh, man. Andrew Luck offense is going to win so bad. So. <laughs> On this week's episode of Alternate Timeline Sports News. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, man. so the Kansas City Chiefs will face off against the San Francisco 49ers on February 2nd, starting at sometime around 6 p.m. <laughs> yep, that's the official start time. Yep. That is and I heard Pucks Tony Phil is doing the coin toss this year, so. <laughs> is, that, is, it, is, it, is it Groundhog Day? It is. It is. Yeah, February second. Ah. Wow. Okay. Who are you guys rooting for? I'm rooting for the Niners. I think. I just want a good football game. Oh. Okay. Take the p- the p- political <laughs> answer here. No, like, well, like, I really like Patrick Mahomes. I think that he's good for the game. Um, I don't know. like Patrick Mahomes. Something about him. See, I like the fact that he sounds like Kermit. Mm. Yeah, that'll do it. It's a good reason to like a football player. <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he's just a he's a gifted athlete. And then I kind of just want to see Jimmy G win a Super Bowl just so he can, you know, throw up the birds to the Patriots and say, hey, you should have kept me and not that old aging quarterback that you have now, who's not even under contract and has talked about exploring options with other teams this offseason. <laughs> Stay away from Indianapolis. Uh, I, The rumor is maybe San, San Diego because Philip Rivers moved his family to Florida today permanently. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard the uh, L.A. Chargers. Yeah. Yeah, well, we could talk more about the Super Bowl next week. And um, yeah, I wanted to, uh, to tell you guys I'm, I'm already drinking my beer this week. I'm not even waiting for the review. I'm already done. You're already done with your beer? Yeah, finished it. No. No, Found I, it. I, I still got half my beer left. Nice. Well, our listeners may be wondering why we're already halfway or completely done. We're just starting our beers. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we've decided that we're no longer going to do beer reviews <laughs> we are now a, officially a fantasy football podcast from here on out right. so uh for the super bowl you Wait, should start Raheem mostert for, th- for those of you that don't like football we're joking keep listening <laughs> <laughs> no, we already Patrick lost Mahomes. it's too late <laughs> yeah i know right I'm, I'm recommending that you also play tyreek hill and travis kelsey they are all good football players. Correct. But anyways, Ober, why aren't we why are we already either beginning, starting, or ending our drinks? I already said we're a fantasy football podcast now. <laughs> That's why I said Obert's name. <laughs> <laughs> this week we decided to do something a little different. Um we are all reviewing and drinking the same beer. And uh to make things interesting, we all recorded our, our reviews blindly. And um, mm-hmm. ha- we have no idea what everybody else thinks about the beer. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's something I think we've talked about on the pod or during mm. our I think pre-pod, we mentioned it. Yeah, pre-pod ramblings. Well, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's something that we thought was interesting. Be like, okay, so now that we don't, we can't lean on each other, wh- what do we pull out of these beers? So, um, and, it, and we got a special one tonight. Yeah, we, we decided to, to do something super, super fun. Chris, why don't you tell the the world what we're drinking? So we all went out and found the uh, Sierra Nevada Limited Edition 40th Hoppy Anniversary Ale. That's right. Mm. So 1980 to 2020, 40 years. That's a lot of that's delicious a lot of beer. Years. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking at my my glass right now. So I think we're just gonna jump into it. Yeah. Jump without the... without further ado, who wants right. to go first? I will go uh, first. All Todd right. I'll go first. Let's and hear what Todd has so to say. Today I'm drinking Sierra Nevada Hoppy Anniversary 40. All right. So this is my review of the Sierra Nevada 40th Hoppy Anniversary Ale. Uh, first, let's start with the visual. It is 100% a West Coast style IPA. It's filtered. Uh, you can see right through it. It's 
it is the definition of what you would call a West Coast style IPA. On the nose, you get a lot of citrusy notes and a lot of pine notes. Um, it definitely smells hoppy, and it 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 smells kind of like like kind of like Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale a little bit, uh, or m- probably more of their tor- their torpedo. Um, let's let's go ahead and give it a taste. Oh yeah, so there's a lot of hops there. Um, definitely. It starts out very hoppy and kind of fades off into a nice malty backbone type of flavor. Um, you know, finishes it, definitely some of those caramel malts, some of the crystal malts out there. Hi, Crystal. Um, on, as other flavors I pick out, I pick out a lot of pine. Obviously, you can smell it on the nose. Um, you know, definitely very citrusy. I would say probably grapefruit is the closest flavor I can pick out, and that's only at the very beginning of the taste. Um... But yeah, definitely a very hoppy beer. But you know, ultimately, it is still just it tastes like a tastes like a hoppy IPA by Sierra Nevada. Um, it doesn't taste too 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 different than any of Sierra Nevada's other West Coast style IPAs. You know, it just it has that Sierra Nevada flavor, which is great. It's it's good for them, and that's that's what they're famous for. But this is not something that I would say is any different than anything they they come out with on a year basis. Or on a daily basis, this it's good. It might be better than a than a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, but you know, as, as far as the class of beer it goes, it's in that class. Let's let's go ahead and give it another taste. Yeah, still just it, you know, hoppy up front with a citrus kind of you know turns a little earthy, I guess. Um, and then kind of just fades away into that that malt character, as I said. Pretty good beer overall, though. Uh, you know, definitely look forward to drinking the other ones that I have of this. I bought three from the store just so I can make sure that when I was doing this style of review, I could go back and try it again and come back and edit it if I needed to. But yeah, this is, it's good. Um, My rating, I'm going to go ahead and give this a 375. It's really good. It's not anything special. But overall, you know, it's worth worth going out and finding yourself. Um, Cheers to Sierra Nevada. Happy 40th anniversary and to 40 more and to hopefully many, many more after that. But yeah, that's a review. Boom. Nice. Good job. Good job, Todd. What yeah. do you What do you think There's... of reviewing a beer by yourself? <laughs> it's It's very weird talking into a void and having n- nobody answer back. I guess it would be kind of weird if something answered back to me while I was re- reviewing by myself. But it is definitely better to have people to bounce off your ideas and your thoughts while you're drinking a beer. Um, also, people to fill those silences while you're you know trying to put beer in your mouth and swallow it is also helpful too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's how i describe when i drink stuff yeah yeah you mentioned gonna... you mentioned uh you got a grapefruit aroma up front that was the only thing of review that really surprised me great grapefruit taste not aroma taste okay grapefruit I flavor like the, yeah yeah i thought the very beginning of the taste was more grapefruit style flavor than than any other citrus fruit i could think of yeah i'm still getting very minor citrus notes overall mm. but um I could, I could, now that you say it, I can kind of visualize. I think more lemon than grapefruit, but sure. Right. See, when I think of lemon, I think of like bitter and I don't get any like, or it's like sour and I don't get any sour from this yeah. beer. So I think of it more like a grapefruit, which is still kind of citrus, like super, super citrusy. But when it's in a beer, as we all know, it doesn't have that bite that, you know, a fruit of grapefruit has. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, grapefruit's even more bitter than lemon, but I just think of it as like. When you get a lemon in your water, it's not like super bitter. You just get that that more of the aroma from the lemon peel, I think. True. Mm. When was the last time you had a grapefruit, by the way? Uh, you, you know what I really like? It's too much work. I really like the Del Monte grapefruit in a cup, like the the grapefruit pieces and the mm. in the the juice, like the no sugar added one. That's really good. I really like that. I it, recommend it. It's, it's way better than grapefruit. Yeah, it's less work. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I love grapefruit, and it's just uh, cutting and cutting all the little thing. Oh man, it's just the end of the world. So, not even I, worth it. I probably haven't had a grapefruit in I'm going to say 25 years. Wow, that's a long I've time. Definitely had one since then. Yeah, but. me too. <laughs> I think honestly, I think when I was when we were living in Connecticut, we went through a weird grapefruit phase for some reason. I don't know, but. Yeah, it was it was a good review, and you actually said something that as soon as you said it, I was like, "Oh yeah!" And you'll come to find out, I did not say <laughs> in, my, in my review at all. So, well, with that, why don't we get right into Chris's review? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, so as you 
probably heard up until this point, we're all doing the Sierra Nevada 40th anniversary, hoppy anniversary ale. So 65 IBUs, 6% alcohol. And, you know, actually, I already realized that I poured it before I started recording. So you guys are going to be cheated out of your little that everybody looks forward to. So there it is. That's me opening the bottle for you guys. So poured it into my poor character glass, of course. Uh, nice, beautiful, like, amber, golden color. The head dissipated pretty quickly, which is, I think, pretty typical for, like, a West Coast-style ale, which this is. On the nose, you get a, a, a good smell of those, like, piney notes that you, get, you that you would expect from, like, a Sierra Nevada ale. It's uh, got a little bit of a sweetness to it, smell-wise, but, you know, just get hit straight with some, you know, piney West Coast stereotypical west coast style you know flavor so let's see uh let's see what this bad boy tastes like 40 years this has been brewing longer than i've been alive that's a long time oh yes very nice yeah very very nice i mean you get hit with some uh pine real heavy up front you know those earthy piney notes it sweetens up a little bit in the middle and then it kind of picks up some malt backbone towards the end and then it leaves you with like a nice um semi-sweet piney end to it again that's picking up the malt you can definitely tell there's some crystal malt in this bad boy uh due to the due to the sweetness and it not being overly overly dark so it doesn't quite cross into that dark malt void that we've talked about on the show a long time ago in one of our most famous segments that actually made people uncomfortable anywho very good uh a little on the bitter side i think it's accentuated by the fact that it is a west coast style so you get those piney notes and it's 65 ibu which isn't isn't 120 or anything like that but it's a formidable amount so it's a it's a really really good beer i mean you don't really expect anything else from sierra nevada sierra nevada just puts out really really good beer and let me see one more taste for good luck you know what i'm gonna give it a 4.0 for 40th anniversary so it's a 4.0 anniversary and a 4.0 hoppy anniversary. So there we go. That's Chris's rendition of <laughs> of this. So uh, stay tuned for the other two, or stay tuned for us all talking about it, depending on where this falls into the podcast. Nice. I like I like that, Chris. I like how you also mentioned the crystal malts. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. That was. I was happy that Ted said that because it kind of <laughs> kind of made me feel good about it. Yeah. But, but uh, 4.0, wow, I'm surprised. You, yeah. you'll, you'll hear what I guess thought you were going to guess once we get to mine, but that's high. Yeah, yeah it, it's a good beer. It's, um, you know, I don't know, something about it just, it, it, it kind of spoke to me. And I think I also was like, I was probably on the borderline between 3.75 and 4.0, but if it's the 40th anniversary beer ale, like, what are you going to do? Like, give it yeah. a 3.75? Like exactly. A <laughs> it was the 37 and a half cause... anniversary, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, Chris and I are like lockstep on our ratings. So yeah, we hear, are we are generally pretty close. Yeah. To hear you go three seven or to hear you go four and me go three seven five, like, that was that was shocking to me. What did I mention in my review that you didn't mention in yours or that you couldn't figure out what to say? Ober, did you pick up on it? No, I didn't mention citrus at all. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So, and and as soon as you said, it, I was like, oh yeah, yes, definitely some citrus. So um. It, that's that I sweetness think, that you taste. Uh, yeah, well, that's definitely part of it. That's part of some of the sweetness, even though you were just saying that grapefruit is, isn't sweet. But um, yeah, but it, it's it's a good beer. Like it a lot, as you just heard. Yeah. Do you think um, you think if they made this year round, you'd you'd go back to it? I mean, I wouldn't not drink it. You know what I mean? I think that's what like, a four point oh. Yeah, that's right, right around there. As like you know, trying to bolster my untapped numbers, it's not very often I return back to a beer unless it's something that I like just fell in love with head over heels, you know. Yeah, um, living but, in I mean, a place it's... where you can get that many different beers, it must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. That's what I was gonna say is that you know in Connecticut, there's so many good beers that I can walk into a package store or a liquor store and just pick up off the shelf and be like, oh damn, this is a good beer. Like, there's no need to go to a three seven five beer in my opinion again if i like if i was going to go to the pack if i was going to somebody's house and i stopped by a package store i could pick up a headway a four pack of headway and a four pack of no filter 
you know, and a four pack of sip and be on my way and be, you know, be set for the entire time I was there. Right. Yeah. See, my go to is like, I always picture myself sitting at a bar with like nine tap handles, four of which are like Bud Light, Coors Light, and Miller Light. And I'm like, okay, what would have to be on this tap hand? Like, what would my tap handle selection be for me to want to go back to this beer? You know? And I'm like, you know, well, you'll see in my review how I how I compared it to to other beers. This would have a hard time being picked by me again in the Connecticut craft beer scene currently with, you know, with all the different types of beers that I can find most anywhere. Yeah. I guess my description of, of a bar with nine tap handles is kind of dated to like 2011 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you've, been, you've been out of connecticut for too long it's only been two weeks at this point but yeah oh, apparently I guess you didn't it, go to enough bars while you were here i guess i mean every bar is, is beyond that point now mm. but i i would put this you know, well we'll get we'll get into this i have a i have a thought process of where this would rank among readily available beers everywhere okay but should we just listen to mine and close it out yes yeah let's do it all right hello and welcome to drinking alone a podcast segment where i review a beer all by myself and tell you how I feel about it. This week, I have the 40th anniversary Sierra Nevada Hoppy Anniversary Ale. Um, this bottle, just looking at it, it has very much an Art Deco, black and gold, roaring 20s look to the bottle. Uh, same shape as your traditional Sierra Nevada bottle. Uh, very snazzy black Sierra Nevada cap. Crack this open. I'm going to be drinking today's beer straight out of the bottle because that's how I enjoy Sierra Nevada best. I don't know why. Something about the bottle conditioned beers. With that, let's get right into it. To be honest, it smells just like a Sierra Nevada. Very similar hop profile. Um, they call this the Hoppy Anniversary Ale. Um, it says that this beer showcases the bold flavors and aromas of a classic West Coast IPA. Intense pine and citrus with a deep cold color and slight caramel sweetness. Here's to following your passion and to the next 40 years. Well, cheers to that, Sierra Nevada. Hmm. Okay. I get definitely a little bit more of a caramel malt flavor than the regular Sierra Nevada, whereas Sierra Nevada is your traditional pale ale flirting with an IPA. Right off the bat, I get a little bit more full body in terms of a more of a roundness with the malts. Well, actually, I'm going to pause this review and go get a glass here. One second. Okay. Had to go and pour it in a glass because it's hard to review a beer from a bottle. Yeah, like they said in the label, definitely looks a little darker than the Sierra Nevada, but not much. Still low on the SRM scale. Um, really bubbly. I poured this in my Sierra Nevada glass, and um, there's a good half inch of head on top and just a lot of bubbles coming up. Um, not quite Bud Light level bubbles, but... Um, more than I would expect for an IPA. Yeah, now that I've poured it into a glass, I um, get a little bit better appreciation for the flavor. And as I've had a few more sips, um, I don't know. You know what? I'm a huge fan of the OG Sierra Nevada. This is not as good. Um, I think that it's a little less hoppy and it's not working as well for me. I think Sierra Nevada makes some great beers, but I don't think that this 40th anniversary is something that I would reach for again over the traditional Sierra Nevada, except for the fact that it's in kind of a cool bottle. That being said, it's still a good beer. Uh, I give it a three and a half out of five. And I'm going to say it now before I forget, but I'm guessing that Chris and Tud are both going to come in right around where I am, the three and a half range. And we'll I'll say the untapped average will be like a three, six, eight. So... Um, all right. That was drinking alone. Can't wait to hear how the other guys think. Bye. So, uh, fun fact, I haven't checked this into untapped yet, so I don't know what the, what the untapped rating is, but based yeah, on the, f yeah, I mentioned mine was a three, six, eight. What did you guys think? I'm going to have to guess somewhere just, just based on how we went across the spectrum. I'm going to say three, seven, seven. And I'm going to say three, eight, six. There we go. Well, it is a three seven eight, Todd. You are the winner. It's so close. Oh man! Oh come on! Damn! So yeah. close. I'm gonna get this one day. Yeah. Well, so I said three six eight. You said what three eight? Chris, what did you say? Three point eight. 
uh, 3.86. 386. So we were all kind of within 10, <laughs> right? Except Ted right. was within one. So Right. But but yeah, you guys surprised me rating it a lot higher than I thought than I thought you would. But see, and I thought out of the three of us, you were going to have the highest rating on this because you are like a Sierra Nevada like fanboy. I am, I am, and maybe mm. that's why I was more critical of it. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. I was I was a little surprised too. I thought I thought you were gonna. I don't know if you would have gone four because you are also one of the the stingiest. A little stingier. On the pod. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I was expect I wasn't expecting a three and a half, maybe three seven five. Um, but no, that's very interesting. It's not uh, it's not very often that you know you have I guess three completely different ratings. I mean, it's completely different. It's not completely accurate. But <laughs> yeah, it's it is odd that me and you were half a point off. That is surprising. Right. To me. Right. Yeah. That's that's a that's a big swing right there. But 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 I I, I bought a six pack of these, so I'm working my way through them now. Uh, on today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, f- fun fact i went to total wine and they only had singles left of this so i bought all the singles they had which was three of them nice uh they were a dollar 79 a piece so i probably overpaid for my three beers but at the same time yeah. i got nervous that i wouldn't be able to find it anywhere else so mm. yeah we need yeah. you need one for your pre-recorded review one for the episode and then one to take a picture of for the instagram so well so what i ended up doing pulling pulling back the kimono a little bit i recorded two different reviews and on two different days so oh, i really? drank two different beers yes uh, oh wow i thought you like recorded them back to back no no no. i recorded them i recorded them on two different days plus i'm drinking one now that i'm almost at the end of here so uh, okay i'm done with my three beers by the time this beer is done uh just for the soul fa- it, it it actually it worked out really well so um that worked but as i was talking about before if i was going to compare this you're talking about the nine tap handle thing and, and it just got me thinking if i saw this on tap say we just went to a normal like dive bar that had your standard beers plus like your standard quote unquote like ipas and maybe like a killian's red and something like that yeah they had like, like a Goose boston Island, lager and <laughs> yeah, yeah, like your standard tap pours, plus they that's, went... That's exactly yeah. like the kind of bar I was trying to picture. Yeah. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, maybe a Guinness, yeah. I don't know. So I'm thinking like if... So comparing this, if this was what was on tap there versus an Elysian Space Dust, which, you know, owned by Anheuser-Busch, uh, it's a... You know, it's, it's not a made beer. with Galaxy Hops. Yeah, not made with <laughs> Galaxy Hops for sure. Um, All the things we know about that beer. <laughs> I think I would choose this beer over that, but I don't think it's I don't think it's as slam dunk as a decision as like Chris would have. I think Chris would see this and instantly order this over the Elysian Space Dust because his rating is higher. But I think I would have a really difficult option. And Ober, I think you might order the Elysian Space Dust over this. I would. And that's one thing I mentioned in my review was I like the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale more than I like this beer. So right. to me, that's kind of the baseline because this seems like it's just a spinoff of the pale ale. Um, I just took it as a pale ale with more more crystal malts. Yeah, yeah. and th- I said that they said the same thing in my review is that it it tasted to me and smelled to me like a Sierra Nevada pale ale or a torpedo. It just it smells like a Sierra yeah. Nevada beer. And I noticed like that we beer. we kind of both picked up on that. Yeah. Mm. Well, that was kind of fun. I liked I liked yeah. that. That was a good experiment. I want to. I'm curious what our listeners think of of SN40 or our reviews, <laughs> our solo, our drinking alone reviews. Uh, drinking alones, yeah, you, yeah. You, you gotta you, let us know. Hit up that email, dawfpodcast at gmail dot com, and uh, let us know what you think because this was fun. Um, I think we should know, do it again. We, we, we'll we'll do it again, irregardless it, of what the listeners think. <laughs> Even if they hated it. <laughs> <laughs> no, if they okay. don't want to see Nevada 40 by now, after we've been talking about it for 25 minutes, uh, I don't know <laughs> how we, how we, we could convince them. Right, yeah. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. That was a good, good, good brain collab, guys. Yeah. Woohoo. So, Chris, I know you wanted to mention um, a segment we're going to do in a couple weeks. Yes. It's that time of year. It is that time of year. Super Bowl red, time? Red, red carpet. Right, yeah, tuxedo, Roll out the red carpet. I mean, both yep. the Super Bowl teams designer are red, dresses are red. Yeah, what are you guys? What are you guys wearing today? Who are you? Who wearing? are you wearing? That's right. I'm wearing Nike Klein. Um, I'm wearing my bonsai bonsai brewing shirt. 
Ooh. I think I'm wearing no brand. I think that's this, these clothes are from Target. <laughs> Target t-shirt. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we got the red carpet out. It's, uh, you know, all the all the stars are here. Paparazzi everywhere. That's them taking pictures. And oh, uh, I'm confused. Is this, is this happening right now or is this happening in two weeks? It's happen- well, it's a very long red carpet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a very, very 35 long mile long red carpet uh, right <laughs> it's gonna take us two weeks to walk 35 miles i think we might be in trouble <laughs> well you, you gotta think you get stopped by the 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 reporters and you know you have to talk into the microphone and be like oh my god you look so stunning in that bonsai t-shirt be like, is there a well, beer thanks. tap in the on the way oh yeah probably There's a few yeah right that's the other problem anyway so episode 76, so a couple weeks from now, we will be hosting the very first ever-ish Mr. Oscar 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it 2020? I guess it would be 2020. I don't know how the yeah, Oscars work. Last year was Mr. Oscar 2019, so we got to okay. go one up. That's <laughs> fair. That's fair. But we're awarding re- awards for last year's stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah like we this already is, did. Like again, to your Super Bowl analogy, this is like the 2020 Super Bowl for the 2019 season. So it's kind of the same idea, right? But when this goes down in history, this will be called the 2019 Super Bowl. Well, this is not how Mr. Oscar work. How does Mr. Oscar work? No, so we were talking about it um, a little bit, and we kind of came up with this idea to do our very own little mini award show on the podcast. Um, where we can have a bunch of really fun categories, uh, fun nominees, and be able to celebrate our year together, uh, you know, our year of 2019 for Mr. Oscar 2020. Because <laughs> that's how it works. That's how Mr. Mr. Oscar works. Exactly. Anyway, so, you know, we wanted to get some listener involvement. Um, we're going to have some pretty cool categories, like we were talking about best beer on the pod. Um, so, uh, you know, We'll go through and we'll each pick a nominee uh, for one of the best beers that we had on the pod. We were talking about best brewery, uh, talking about some other fun, more fun ones, funny ones, um, like world's okayest movie, uh, things like that. And um, and you'll hear more next week as well. Right. Yeah. We're still coming up with all the awards. There's so many, you know, that we got to that we got to do. And uh, we want to get some listener involvement. So uh, by all means, if you have any fun ideas for set for uh, an award that we should hand out or nominees or uh something like that please shoot us an email hit us up on instagram do whatever you got to do and uh and send them over to us because we're looking for some fun stuff uh as well as uh all of our patrons uh so thank you to our patrons out there of course um you guys all get votes so we'll send a ballot out to you um you'll get votes you'll be able to go in and uh weigh in on <laughs> Who's going to be Mr. Oscar 2020? Right. <laughs> um, Who takes home that golden six foot tall statue shaped like Han Solo frozen and kryptonite? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the most inconvenient award show ever. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah. So if, if you've been thinking about joining the Patreon, um, this is going to be a fun time to do so. You get, you get some votes. Instagram, of course, we love you. Um, Instagram is going to be involved as well. So, um, you know, keep keep an ear out the next few weeks. We'll be talking about a little bit more, talking about some of the nominees, some of the awards. And, uh, yeah, it'll, I think right. it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, so make sure, listeners, you guys are going out and uh, getting your suits pressed and your bow ties picked out. Uh, right. For the ladies, go out and, you know, find your Gucci, uh, find your Gucci dresses and your Liz Taylor dresses. And I'm trying to think of other designer people. But all those designer people. Make sure that you're wearing comfortable shoes because, again, it is 35 miles long. The yeah. red carpet, so you might want to start now. Right. You know, and, and, and to Blevin, you know, make sure that you put on that J-Lo dress from a couple of years ago. Put those pasties on the side of your, your boobs. That way that it stays on perfectly and start walking the 35 miles. But you have to walk it in heels. Yeah. Take okay. that. Take that, Blevin. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hashtag enemy of the pod hashtag enemy of the pod biggest enemy ever so guys i i experienced something recently and if you follow us on instagram which i assume everybody does um you may have seen it but i experienced something that i've aliens no not a aliens. close encounter of the third kind no not that either but monkeys i went to a self a self-serving tap room 
Have you guys ever been to oh. one of these? I have. Yeah. I have not. No? How so, was it? it? It was awesome. So I'll give a shout out. Barracuda Tap Room in Hickory, North Carolina. If you're in the area, stop by. They got like, I think they had like 40 or 45 taps available, including some wines, including some ciders. So, you know, if you're not into beer, you can still go in and have, have some good time. You get this little bracelet and you kind of just go up and hit it up against the thing and then you can pour as much beer as you want and well you know up to a amount, <laughs> the, but. the thing so the yeah. screen or the the yeah, id it's, reader it's, the, the rfid <laughs> reader yeah and and it charges by the ounce and then at the end you just pay whatever you drink it's it's it was so cool i had so much fun it was that great. is pretty cool i do have a one question for you though yes so how did you know which one you wanted to go for first that's a really good question um I don't even remember which one I had first, to be honest. I I don't know. I just kind of walked down the taps, and the first one that jumped out at me, I I was I was like way more excited to just try the wristband out than <laughs> than drink the beer. <laughs> How many beers were on tap? He just said forty ish. All right. So. All right, so the reason I asked how many beers were on tap is because the one that I went to had had like an electronic touch screen on the wall where you walked up to any of the taps and you tapped the the beer you wanted and then you scanned your card and it poured that beer out of the tap but there were still you know 20 or 25 taps on the wall so multiple people could go up at the same time and get the same beer if they wanted so it was oh. basically like the the coke machine yes, at five coke guys <laughs> correct exactly. yes it's exact it was exactly like the coke machine oh um, no you still that's... got charged by the ounce but it was exactly like that and i could get any beer i wanted out of that tap. you could get it peach flavored <laughs> yeah you know or or french pressed you know right yeah <laughs> no so this was not quite that not like that um there was uh 46 distinct taps on the wall and each one was correlated to a beer or wine or something like that so uh, there had four wines on tap and i think they had four ciders on tap and then the rest were beer so oh wow but you know if for some reason, everybody wanted the same beer. You'd have to take turns, go into the little tap, and do do that. But um, when we were yeah. in there, it was uh, us, and then like one other group was there. So, well, um, you were talking about your your march to six hundred and however many check ins last year, right? And uh, you were asking if you could get half pours at the uh, at the brewery, and I wasn't sure if you just went around just buying one ounce of beer at a time <laughs> at this place. <laughs> uh there was uh i mean there was a few that i got heavier pours on um but for the most part i would get a couple ounces and then move on to the next beer because i want a couple meaning two two or three yeah yeah so and i think a standard taster is four ounces so D did you have yeah. a normal size glass yes yes normal size glass did you get uh, a and they had those things where you put where you put it the glass on it and it goes and it does the water had those. Oh, okay. yeah, those are cool. Fancy. So you kept the same glass all the, the entire time, right? Yes. Yep. But it was it was really cool. I mean, I can't wait to go back. It's uh, you know, it's it's a little bit of a drive for us, but completely worth it, especially for those people that you know don't know what they want, or if you're like me and trying to hunt down that number. You know, it's all about yeah. check-ins in life. Or um, you do know what you want, and it's new beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, yeah, but it's a really awesome way. I went with my sister. She was in town, and um, she li she's like, I like IPAs. I was like, okay. And I was like, well, try this one. Try this one, you know. And she was able to try a bunch of different kinds of beer that she would have probably either maybe never tried or never had the opportunity to. So it was pretty cool. It's, I highly recommend going to the one in Hickory um, because that's where I went, and it was fun. It sounds like we have a place to go next time I'm in town. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Whenever you come back, you, we, we're definitely going to go. Actually, I was talking to the owner, and he was like, oh, you do a podcast? And I was like, yeah. I'm like, next time my, my friends are in town, we're coming. And he's like, all right, good. <laughs> so it was pretty It was pretty funny. So yeah, uh, gotta make sure you take an Uber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. We're going to need to... <laughs> hey, hashtag way for the pod. Um, if you want to win best best wife of the pod at the mr oscar 2020 <laughs> it's a it's a two horse Kate, race caitlin you better be listening yeah you can get yeah. in on this too yeah right uh, popcorn i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, but barracuda tap room hickory north carolina go there very cool 
So, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had discussed a certain Connecticut brewery and the fact that they had opened up a new tap room. And I had mentioned that they had already opened up their second tap room, and I was wrong. Um, so I need to recorrect that on the podcast, but also inform the listeners that officially this weekend, Beard's second tap room in Grime is open. That's exciting. Yeah, I've, I follow those guys on nice. Instagram and um, wishing I could be there to, to check it out. I, I saw the reviews. People said it was a very nice place. Uh, people had to wait about two hours to get into the building at some points during the day uh, yesterday. Keep in mind that in Connecticut, it was also 23 degrees yesterday. So some people sat in that line for two hours in 23 degree weather to get into the new facility. But all reviews not say it. that it, it, it's not because you could just drive to Stonington and go to their other their other brewery. Right. <laughs> um, but the, the reviews came back really well. They uh, People seem to like it. Obviously, it's beard. So their beer's going to be good, as we all know. Um, but yeah, I just needed to correct that little bit of misinformation I passed along a few weeks ago, but at the same time, also tell the people that it's open now and you all should head there when you're in town or if you're already in Connecticut, head on down in the next couple of weeks and go check out the new facility. I hear it's pretty, pretty awesome. Well, yeah, you want to talk about a brewery that uh, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. I, when they, I went there within a month of them opening and, um, Aaron, the head brewer and owner you know, he was a young guy, my age, you know, mid twenties. And he wanted to open this brewery without doing any or minimal bank loans. They got, they had a single digit barrel system. I want to say it was like a seven barrel system that they were brewing with. And, uh, you know, just a couple beers on tap and it really exploded from there. So to see them now open this new place, it's like pretty incredible how far they've come and, uh, really goes to show, it's kind of a microcosm of the whole Connecticut beer scene, how these guys started out. They made great beer, and uh, look where it got them. Yeah, and they're going to – Beard will be one of those breweries that is around longer than most. Uh, they've been a staple of the Connecticut beer scene for a long, long time. They've always made a killing on giving people free pours, as we all know from Chris's bachelor party, that uh, yep. they're willing to give you as many free pours as you want. Um, that was pretty much the, the beginning of the end of our downfall was stopping at Beard because <laughs> they just kind of poured the beer on top. Then we went to Cottrell, which was even more outrageous with the free beers. But yeah, Beard's <laughs> always been a, a great spot to stop by. It's The one in Stonington has a cool vibe. I'm curious to know how they recreate that same vibe at the new Groton place because Stonington just had such a unique, weird, bohemian style vibe to it. That I don't know if it's I don't know if it's possible to recreate what they have there. Yeah, well, I mean, we went to Green Man in uh, Asheville and like talk about two places next door to each other with totally different vibes. So maybe you want to do maybe it's like, hey, how do you do? You want to go to the the Bohemian place? Or do you want to go to the fancy place? You could kind of mm. keep them unique. I, I would say that I I would prefer to always go Bohemian. I just like I like the character. I like the culture. I like the feel that I'm sitting. In, I guess, dirt while I'm drinking my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be dirty when I drink my beer. No offense, Bohemia. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no uh. offense, Beard, either, because for all we know, they're listeners. Yeah, I know, right? No, yeah. it's a cool it's a cool old New England mill building. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. If you haven't been and, you, and you're in Connecticut or Rhode Island, what are you waiting for? And they've got a kick-ass pizza place in there now, too, which... Make some damn good mm. pizza that you can you can actually order while you're sitting there via text messaging, and they'll bring it to you. So there's no excuse not to get the pizza that's there too. So you don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah, right. You literally, you just have to text, and then a pizza shows up. It's Correct. Like, that's my dream world. Minimum interaction <laughs> is my friend. Um, another thing that I wanted to pass along too, as I promised two episodes ago. All right. So with that, it's time we welcome you to. Everybody's favorite segment, our three-handled frosty mug of wisdom, where we fill it up with goodness from our brains, things we like, things we want to share with the audience. Um, wisdomy wisdom. Wisdomy wisdom, as Ted puts it. And I couldn't I couldn't put it better myself. Um, I'm, I'm starting right away with this frosty mug before it warms up here. I'm going to fill it with a TV show I just binge-watched all nine episodes of from HBO. It's called The Watchmen. I have recently been just binging a lot of HBO content. And um, I think it's a 
solid, very solid show. So you don't need to have seen the movie to enjoy the show, although I will admit that it will help. Um, but it is set in an alternate 2019 with vigilantes and a superhero that has special powers. Um, and it is based on the comic book. I believe it's Frank Miller is the author. Um, it was kind of the first of its kind in terms of anti-heroes and exploring morality in terms of superheroes. Really good comic book. It's also a great movie. Have you guys seen the movie Watchmen? Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it great, but good. It's it's a decent movie. Ted the, wasn't a huge fan, but... Uh, the, the big, giant, blue, phallic-shaped object... Spoilers! Was, uh, ...was quite the interesting addition to the movie. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but that's no surprise to anybody. I don't see movies ever, so... Well, you saw Star Wars. I saw Star Wars, but I love Star Wars. I don't really love the superhero movies, so, you know. But we were talking about trying... Is that Marvel, or is that the other one? DC? DC. What? I don't know what Watchmen is. I think it's independent. Oh. I think it's DC. Yeah, but it is is not fallen there in the universe of other superheroes. It's it's definitely a unique um oh, okay. universe. Yeah. But um yeah, I really recommend checking out the first episode. I think you'll know right away if it's for you or not. And uh once I started it, I was hooked. So, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just going to say just check it out. Cool. I'm just going to steal the mug from you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was about to hand it off, but I thought you wanted to say something about my handle. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right, Todd. Here you go. Yeah, so my handle this week is going to be a uh, cool item that I bought from Best Buy a few weeks ago called a wireless rear speaker kit by Rocketfish. So what it is is if you have – for all the listeners out there or for all the, or for all the co-hosts of the pod, if you have – a home surround sound system. And let's say you don't want those speaker wires to go along your floor or have to get enough of it so it runs along your baseboards or have to pull up your carpet to hide it or go have it go over your ceiling or however the heck you you hide the wires that go from the tuner in the front of the and you know that's probably sitting below the TV to the to the rear speakers. This item will uh replaces that. So it basically is just a bluetooth transmitter that plugs into two wires that come out of the tuner, um, into a, a transmitter that transmits to the back, and from there the two back speakers plug into that, and then you have wireless rear speakers. Uh, it's by Rocketfish, as I said, it's called a wireless rear speaker, and it retails for about 130 bucks. Now I've never done the whole surround sound 5.1 thing. Okay. I have I have a sound bar. I have I have a sub. But um, how like how much of an improvement do you notice when you have the whole surround experience? Okay, so I still think I mean, so at least you're you're at least you're better than just running off of TV speakers because those are terrible. yeah. And I will say like sometimes uh, you know my volume audio will get mixed up and I'll have the TV speakers on and it's like phew, man, it's terrible. If you're gonna spend that much money to watch <laughs> this to watch TV, you should have at least some. Yeah, so I still, I mean, it's still an improvement over a soundbar. I also, my TV also has a soundbar that's starting to die. So uh, there's there's another reason that I went with the 5.1 sound system. But there is a benefit to it. It sounds better. It does immerse you more into the, the product than your soundbar and the subwoofer. Because, you know, you do have those rear speakers that makes you feel like you're 3D immersed into the product. So when you're, you know. When you're watching Star Wars and something's coming up behind you, you know, you hear the ship fly in from the back left all the way to the center, the center of the screen. That's pretty cool. Um, it just, it just elevates the immersiveness. And, you know, if you're thinking about trying, in my opinion, if you're thinking about trying to, to buy a, a surround sound system and you want to just get started, just start with, you know, two front speakers and a center channel and a two, and, you know, an amp. Don't worry about the rear speakers for the time being and just work your way into building up a whole system. Okay, that's solid advice. Yeah, you can go from a three. So the, the so in like a 5.1, the five is the speakers and the one is the sub. You can go from a 3.0 to a 3.1 to a 5.1 in that order. Well, I had no idea that's what those numbers meant, by the way. I mean, it makes total sense. It's like low, total light bulb moment, but that's yeah. cool. And so you can also go up to 7.2 uh, for most systems, which would be two on the side as well and, a, and an additional subwoofer. Hmm. 
but yeah, that's the way that's the way that works. It's always the first number is the number of speakers, and the other number is the the number of subs. So if if you wanted to start for the same price that you usually can get into a sound bar, you can usually buy a 3.0 system and start from there, and then you can build up to a massive system that's just kick ass. Yeah, so I have but a one point one, is what you're saying. You you do <laughs> well. No, technically you have a three point one because the sound bar has a center left and right channel. Correct. Gotcha. So yeah, so so my handle Rocketfish rear speaker system. It's really awesome. It has saved me from running wires across my floor. So now my wife doesn't murder me. Nice. This has been Speaker Hour with Tud for your audio <laughs> experience. Perfect. A lot of knowledge about a lot of things. Master of none of it. You can listen to Drinking Alone with Friends podcast and. 18.4 surround sound. <laughs> Glorious you know, surround sound. I have another story about that, too. I put that on, and Chris, it's amazing how, how much bass you and my voices have. <laughs> <laughs> All about that bass. Doom, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to hand the mug off to Chris to bring it on home. All right. Bringing it on home. Uh, I'm going to recommend a TV show this week, um, and it's one that's been around for a while, and I just started rewatching it again i probably rewatch it like once a year and um the simpsons. no it's not the simpsons uh it is scrubs house oh uh, different medical sh- yeah. different medical <laughs> show <laughs> we, we could have just t- started taking shots at like which what is he gonna guess well i mean yeah. I, Monk, I don't watch no. that much tv um and when I do, it's always the same show over and over again. So <laughs> there's so much uh, TV out there, I just avoid it and watch the same stuff again. <laughs> right. Well, it's like okay. So my, Dana makes fun of me all the time because you know I'll panic when I go to a drive-through I've never been to before because I have no idea what to get. You know, and drive-through you're supposed to be really quick, and that's how I yeah. am with TV. Like there's so much out there, I'm just like. I know I like Scrubs, so I'm going to keep watching Scrubs. <laughs> There's so much so much TV to choose from, and the guy behind me is waiting for me to order already. <laughs> you, you know Netflix has like an option that says like trending or like recommended for you, right? Yeah, but then I'm like, eh, I don't want to. I was going to say, you know that there's like two co-hosts who like to recommend TV shows. Also, also that. <laughs> I've watched uh, The Good Place. I think that was also mine, but I don't did, remember. Did you watch <laughs> but... The Mandalorian? I haven't yet. No, I got to so, do that. So, Scrubs. Anyway, Scrubs. Start yes. with the last season? No, I started with the first <laughs> season. Uh, it's a, it's just, it's a really, I think it's a really funny comedy from back in the day, uh, medical comedy. Um, and there's just, I don't know, the characters are great. Dr. Cox is one of my, like, all-time favorite TV characters. And, I don't know, just funny, easy to watch. Um, if you've seen it like as many times as I have, you can just kind of like put it on the background and it's good, good filler noise. But, um, you know, it's a, they do a really good job except for the very last season where they tried to like reboot it. Don't watch that one. You can stop after, you can stop after, I think it's season seven. I think it is. Yeah. My favorite is the janitor, but it's one of the only shows the, where the original ending, I was like, you know what? That's a good ending, you know? Because not often does that happen. You're like, this is a great ending, and and they're like, you know what I should do is ruin this by having what another streaming season. streaming services are on? <laughs> right. Ruin it by having another season, which is not as good. But anywho, um, it's on Hulu, Tud, I think. I, I don't know where else it's on. I think just Hulu. So, um, by, by the way, before, before we close it out here, I got some feedback. I, I, I had three people reach out to me. And say they were with me. They didn't. And and by the way, I I don't, I don't mean to shit on your handle from last week. If you okay. think it's a great cooler, all right. And you case, and Todd, and, and with that, it, but yeah. uh, and with that, uh, we'd like to thank you all for listening. I don't mean uh, to shit on your handle, but I'm going to shit on your handle right now. We are we are going to thank Sierra Nevada <laughs> for providing us. No, okay. Let's let's hear what your 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 Nazi friends. I just say. I just you know um, they were with me in terms of they don't get it, but. Maybe we just got to try it out. Maybe that's well, the trick. So, that's so Obert, Obert, I have a question for you. I'm listening. What's your question? Do you own this product? No. That's exactly what I said. Maybe I got to try it out. Have you ever used this product? No. Uh, I have never have. The people who texted you, have? do they own this product? No. And all three of us, uh, four of us agreed that we don't see the point to it. So, we would never go out of our way to try or use okay. the product. So, so without, without owning or, or using the product... I don't think the four of you guys have any room to judge because like the two people who do own the product, that that would be Chris and myself, think that it's awesome and that it is well deserving of a handle. But 
if you would like, I mean, you could talk about socks a little bit more if you want. Sure, sure. Maybe. Well, my next handle is going to be like a nine foot tall unicycle. And if you guys have never, if you guys have never ridden one, then you guys wouldn't know how hey, useful it is. You know, if you can ride a nine foot tall unicycle and you want to bring it as a handle to the pod, Godspeed, man. It. I would, but my microphone cord isn't that long, so. Just trust me, I can ride it. Yeah. So okay, well. I, I didn't see any official emails, so there was no official protests. So yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I have to agree. You're and back no to- one came, no one came to your defense and said, "Yeah, I have this and I like it." Listen, I mean, Dana likes it. Out of the thousands of listeners that we have, you you talked to three people who said, "Eh," and one the of, rest one of, the, of the, which was co-host Jordan, but guest host Jordan. The rest, of, but the rest of the listeners didn't say anything because you know why? Because they were like, "Oh, that's a solid handle." Right. Maybe I'll go out and buy it, or I already own it, and I think it's I don't awesome. Need to, I don't need to write in because that's how <laughs> awesome it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody who did anybody who didn't say anything is just agreeing with the handles. <laughs> well, here's your chance, listeners. As and Todd is going to tell you exactly how you can get in contact with us to let us know how great you love all of our handles. Yeah. So that's coming up in a little bit, but first. I'm going to take a little bit of time out and thank uh, Sierra Nevada for providing the 40th Hoppy Anniversary Ale. Please go on to social media and follow us at DAWF Podcast. That's Instagram, Facebook, Untapped, Twitter, and uh, Discord. Make sure that you're also hashtag following the email at DAWFpodcast at gmail.com. Write in if you think that Chris's handle last week was well worth the handle. Um, here, here. You know, or write in if you want to hear, you know, a few more sock reviews. I think that, uh, I think the I think the listeners are kind of starving for that. I have bit. more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually I think I sent this in the text yesterday, but I was like, my mammoth wool socks. Yeah, that was a good handle. I can back <laughs> that one up. That one that was a good one because I look forward to having those on my feet at uh, on, at work. Anyways, <laughs> also make sure that you're writing in and telling us about what what you're doing when you're listening to our podcast. We still want to know. You know, are you are you riding a subway? Are you going to space? We'd love to be the first podcast ever listened to in space, so let's make that happen. Yeah, I'm sure that I don't think anyone else has claimed it. So let's correct. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I've never seen it advertised, so I want to be the first one. I want to be the first one listened to live on a on a space shuttle as it's taking off. Yeah, yeah, live? maybe. Yeah, I don't. Again, I don't know if Todd understands how podcast works. <laughs> <laughs> we can broadcast live to, to the astronauts if they want to. Uh. <laughs> Ted, you're, Ted, you're talking about what radio? <laughs> <laughs> make sure you go. Make sure you're, you're heading on over to iTunes and uh, giving us a five star rating and writing a review. Also, make sure that you're telling your friends when you see our posts on uh, Facebook or or Instagram. Please make sure you're hitting the little share button so that way your friends uh, find out about this as well. And just make sure you, you know if you need stickers and you're going to breweries. Ask us, and we'll give you stickers, we'll and you go to the breweries. Up. Yeah, and smack them on the walls. That way people know that there's a podcast out there that's awesome. I mean, granted, our stickers don't say podcast currently, but changes are coming, my friends. Changes are coming. And uh, make sure you're heading on over to Patreon as well. If you want a chance to vote in the uh, 2020 Oscar conversation, you need to be a Patreon subscriber. Mr. Oscar. We Mr. have Oscars. to say Mr. Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's our award show. Apparently, uh, it's our version of the Dundies. We call hang, them the Mr. Oscars. Hang on, wait. <laughs> I just got my lawsuit in hand for just saying without Mr. So uh, <laughs> make sure you're going on there and subscribing. That way, that, that's the only chance you get an option. Or that's the only way you get an option to vote for the Mr. Oscar 2020 with a whole vote. I mean, we're, we'll do special Instagram things, but you know, if you want a, a full actual vote, head on over to there. And with that, my name's Tud. My name's Chris. And I'm Obert. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. I still think that cooler is a very valid handle. Yeah, well, I can't wait to hear our listeners fight in to defend you and to this. <laughs> Primarily me. Come defend my honor. Yeah. <laughs> if you've had, ever had to write a podcast, what's up? Yeah, I think. Out, out of all the out of all the thing out of all the handles and all the land and all the time, this is the one that you chose to like die on the sword with about finding people who disagree with Chris so much. Me? Yeah. No, I just mentioned it because like th- two people texted me and I got a message from Jordan. 
No. Well, granted, one of them was Blevin, so that kind of hurts my case. But <laughs> yeah, that's oh. minus. That's, that's time minus out. Five. Time out. We're by. We're we're done with the the, mu- the music outro at this point, right? Right. Yeah, we're done. One of those people was Blevin. This this minus three to the argument already. I. There's a reason I didn't mention who. It was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so therefore, man. therefore, we're we're Chris. We're winning. High five. Yeah. Yeah.